الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in Sahih Muslim الدنيا سجن المؤمن وجنة الكافر The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said This life is the prison of the believer and it is the paradise for the disbeliever. Imam Sayyuti rahimahullah ta'ala said, Qoluhu ad-dunya sijin al-mu'min wadha fi jim ma'adlaluhu min mathwaba wal jannat al-kafir fi jim ما عد له من عقوبة. Imam Sayyuti said, رحمه الله تعالى, that سج a dunya sijin al mu'min that this life is the prison of believer, is that you place, if we were to place, what Allah subhanahu wa taala has promised the believer with reward, in 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 Jannah, in paradise. And the disbeliever, on the other hand, with what has been prepared for them, for their disbelief, in to, uh, which is torment. And then he said, "Waqil al mu'min yasju nafsuhu an maladi, wa yakhudha bi shada'idi, wal kafir bil aks." He said. Also, it is said about this hadith that the believer is imprisoned or has imprisoned himself being prohibited from many many things and that he is imprisoned and takes this path with great difficulty whereas the disbeliever is the opposite enta waqala an-nawawi li'annahu mamnu' عن الشهوات المحرمة ومكروها مكلف بطاعة فإذا مات فإذا مات القلب إلى نعيم الدائم والكافر بالعكس انتهى. إمام نووي said about this hadith رحمه الله تعالى. He said the reason the believer is that this life is the prison of the believer. And the paradise of the disbeliever is that is because for the believer everything, many things are prohibited from his desires, meaning his desires that are muharram, the the uh, prohibited desires, and things which are disliked, and they are responsible for being. Obedient from the various types of uh, obedience to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, so that if they die, meaning the believer, if the believer dies, then that difficulty and those prohibitions turn to comfort and reward forever, everlasting comfort and reward. Whereas the disbeliever is in the opposite state, so this shows us from the statements of the ulama, imams like Imam An Nawawi, and Imam uh, Sayyuti, rahimahumullah, that the believer they experience, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, that this dunya is the sijin of the mu'min. It doesn't mean that the mu'min, the believer, is in misery. No. But what it means is the the believer is restrained from just following their desires, that they're restrained by the Sharia, that the believer must conform to the commandments of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and His Messenger Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, and that the believer cannot just follow his or her vain desires. So there are many things which are prohibited for the believer for his or her own good. Whereas the opposite is the case of the disbeliever. 
that though those people, especially who have no boundaries, that the only bounds and things that they restrict themselves with are what they don't feel like doing. So if they feel like involving themselves in many relationships, many sexual relationships, for example, they do so without a blink of an eye, with no guilt. Sleep with this one this night, sleep with that one that night, the other night sleep with two or three, with no shame. Indulge in this drug, indulge in that drug, mix the drugs with no shame, no sorrow. If I still live, then I'm okay. So they indulge to their fullest extent, but in the hereafter it will be the tables will be turned and they will be punished for their indulgence. Whereas the mu'min, they restrain from that. Their desires might, their shahwat might incline them to, to look at this and to listen to this and involve themselves in this and to pursue this thing which goes against the sharia and goes in accordance with their desires, but they restrain themselves for the sake of Allah subhanahu, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they imprison themselves to uh, and restrict themselves. But in the hereafter, all of that, those things that they prohibited themselves from and all of the difficulties that they experience will be turned into good, goodness uh, on their scales and they will have everlasting comfort and, and be content to the fullest extent more than anyone could have ever experienced in this dunya. And so we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us to be of those who experience this, uh, the beauty of Naim. Uh, fil, fil qabr in our graves and naim fi jannatu fardos amin ya rabbil alamin wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam